In the summer of 1934, the world was a very tumultuous place. Things were moving rapidly across the oceans, but people here in this country were preoccupied with the economic difficulties and challenges of their time. Almost one quarter of the working population was out of work. It was the depth of the Great Depression. In the American Midwest, it was the famous Dust Bowl, and while we worry about global warming right now, truth be told, in those days, no one thought of such a vocabulary. All they knew was 300 million acres of arable land were destroyed by a drought and searing temperatures in Oklahoma that would reach and stay fixed at 117 degrees throughout that summer of 1934. Who could think about the odd little man with a mustache in Germany who on August 2nd of that year declared himself to be the Führer, the supreme leader of Germany? Who could have known what would happen next? The American public was running away from its problems into theaters, as we are always prone to do, and there was a movie called It Happened One Night. Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert swept the Oscar awards that year for this fanciful tale of romance. Shirley Temple appeared for the first time in film singing a song called The Good Ship Lollipop. The movie was called Stand Up and Cheer, and she had just a bit part, but she became a phenom that year and has never been forgotten since. A gallon of gas, 10 cents. A loaf of bread, 8 cents. The average American wage in a year, $1,600. Doesn't sound like much except when you realize that housing, the cost of rent, averaged about $20 a month in those days. Bonnie and Clyde, John Dillinger, they were wiped out by the FBI. And into a world like that, there was a pastor in the Christian church in Chicago named Albert and his wife, Aline, and they would give birth to the third of what would be five children in their house, and they named her Violet. And so Violet, that we know as Vi, was born. When she was still just a little tiny thing, her father accepted a call to a new pastorate of the Christian church in Mishawaka in northern Indiana, and it would be in that world that she was raised. Until she was a junior in high school, she would revel in the beautiful summers and in the seasons of the year here in Indiana. She learned to love flowers and gardens and the way things can grow here so phenomenally. She learned how to frame the world through the teaching of her parents, godly persons who had a sense of both God's grace and judgment, people who had a world that was ordered by values and objective standards that were beyond the moment and were not affected by headlines or the weather or people's polling. She grew up in a world devoted to her family and to the God of her family. And from those two anchors, she would never waver. Her mother's health began to decline, though, in northern Indiana over the years. She suffered, suffered with some respiratory ailments, and her uh, doctors advised that if she could find a drier climate, then Vi's mom might do better. And so Vi's father, Albert, accepted a pastoral call to Phoenix, that's about as dry as you can get. And just after her junior year, as she was approaching her senior year in high school, she would move to Phoenix, Arizona. For many of us, that sounds like a prescription for disaster. After having lived in one place for all of your conscious memory and to go to something so radically different as Phoenix from Mishawaka, it seems like, well, it's just trouble ahead. But there was something about Vi that was able to adapt and to make the best of wherever she was, however she was. And truth be told, she loved her senior year in Phoenix. She was enrolled in a private Christian school, the Phoenix Christian Academy, the high school. It's still there, and she graduated in 1953, and she loved it. She had no regrets. She enjoyed the adventure. She enjoyed the world. She enjoyed just what God had given her day by day. And maybe also her move out there was made all the more pleasant because of a friend that she had met back in Mishawaka. His name was Richard Lewis Stroop. Now, Vi, in those days a Hayes, had fallen into the company of this young man when he became acquainted with her larger family. He was drawn into the Christian church in Mishawaka because of the dynamics, the loving grace, the, the feel and the embrace of this Hayes bunch whose dad was the pastor at the local Christian church. And as he became drawn magnetically to the Hayes family, he noticed the girl in the middle, Vi, and he fell for her and fell for her heart. Richard Lewis, Lewis Richard was called Dick, and he would always be Dick Stroop. And after Vi moved out to Phoenix, he had graduated from high school already. He was just a couple years ahead of her. 
but he could not forget the beautiful Vi Hayes. And he actually moved then out to Phoenix to follow her. Maybe that's why her senior year was so filled with adventure and joy, because this love of her life that was born then, that love which would last for so many years, was still resident and still a constant even before she left high school. After graduation in 1953, Dick and Vi would marry in Phoenix, May 20th, 1954. But again, the world was notching. The world was changing. Hitler had long ago been vanquished, but by 1954, there were new threats. There were new marching armies on the world stage. And in 1954, those were the armies of communist China and North Korea. And the Korean War was inflaming the globe. And so many young men in Dick's generation were swept up into that draft. And right after his marriage to Vi, he was drafted. Vi then, a young woman just out of high school, newly married, packed up her bags and moved again not back to Indiana, but to West Virginia, where he would serve, her husband would serve his tour of duty, having responded faithfully to the draft. But when he was released from the army, they decided to go back home to northern Indiana, and there they would settle. And it was while they, Dick and Vi, settled again in northern Indiana, once again breathing in the sweet summer air, look, watching the fireflies dance across the cornfields, Fond memories Vi had of her summers growing up, not just in Mishawaka, but at Winona Lake, where she was immersed in the beauty and the wonder of gospel music and, and the fervor of the gospel crowd. 